So we're up to Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. And uh, I'm just going to read it from two different translations. The first says this, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do. Because you are his dear children, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Now the second one I've reading of God is actually from the, uh, the Bible called The Message. So it's a little bit more quirky. It says this, watch what God does and then do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. <coughs> so tonight we're looking at what does it mean to imitate Christ or imitate God. And it's interesting, the uh, late uh, Dr. Albert Schwarzer uh, was asked, what's the best way to raise children? And he replied three ways. Number one, by example. Number two, by example. Number three, by example. So I think it's a rather I good... So you could, I thought the third was the best of the three. <laughs> but it's interesting, as you go through scriptures, the idea of imitation comes out very, very strongly. So uh, the first thing we're told as Christians is to imitate God. So Matthew 5, uh, 48 says, Therefore you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Then in Luke six thirty six, Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. So there's a sense that we should aim to have a godly character. Now, God's love is, uh, in God's, uh, uh, the statement, God is love, we find our greatest expression of what it means to be like God. And so how do we become like God? When we love other people. So we see the idea, first of all, of imitating God is the number one. Second, we're told often that we should imitate Christ. So in 1 Peter 2.21, uh, For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving us an example for you to follow in his steps. And there was a very famous Christian author many years ago who one of his books was called In His Steps. And the whole book was, if you, uh, to be Christ-like in how you do, how would that physically look in day-to-day -day living? And then in, uh, one of the most famous passages is from Philippians 2, verse 3 to 8. Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your personal interests, but also for the interests of others. And then it tells us how. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. So as uh, Christ was humble and uh, loving, he gives us the example to be that likewise. So we've got the Father to imitate, we've got Jesus to imitate. And it's interesting, the Apostle Paul preached, he'd quite often use himself as an example. So in Philippians 3.17, Be imitators of me, says Paul. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully those who are living this way, just as you have us as an example. So Paul would say, you know, live like me and you're doing the right thing. Or in 1 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore I exhort you, be imitators of me. 1 Corinthians 11, be imitators of me just as I am of Christ. So Paul gives us a very strong link that as he places a Christ-like behaviour, we are to use him as a living witness of what Christ-likeness means. 1 Thessalonians 1.6, you also become imitators of us and of the Lord. So there's a very strong link that um, uh, mature godly Christians should be godly in their behaviour that others could see as a living witness. And uh, he puts it in a, a lot stronger way in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. We loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's good news, but our own lives. And you know we treated each of you as a father treats his own children so there's this really strong sense of intimacy of relationship so uh, paul sees that that's who he should be he also sees that uh, the leaders in a church should be a godly example that if you were like your church leader then you'd be doing a godly step so in hebrews 13 7 remember your leaders who taught you the word of god think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith and so uh, there's this very strong sense that every Christian should be a witness by their love and their example. And so there's nearly a sense of saying, if I copied you, would I be Christ-like? And at times that could be sobering because people would regularly copy the wrong parts of you. 
Uh, what about women? How are they to, uh, to act? Uh, it says in Titus 2, Likewise, older women are to show their reverence for God by their behaviour. Then gives two examples of negative things. Uh, they are not to be gossips or addicted to alcohol, and, but they're given uh, this to say as a positive. But they should be examples of goodness. They should encourage young women to be love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible and pure, to manage their households, to be kind, to submit themselves to their husbands. Otherwise, the word of God may be discredited. So if you've got uh, whingy, gossipy, naggy women uh, in your church, there's a sense that God's word has been damaged by their misbehaviour. So there's a sense that uh, the women in our church uh, should be a godly witness to the other women. And so it's a very strong sense of a, uh, a lived out ministry. What about uh, Christian parents? Ephesians 6. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And I can think of a very sad case where we had a, uh, quite a famous Christian personality and had his kids in youth group. And you talk to them and they realise that uh, their dad might have been a Christian in the pulpit, but he wasn't one at home. And he really couldn't care less for his kids. And you could sense their, their deep alienation from their father. And uh, it was really quite a, a bad thing that he lived a double life in every expect, uh, respect of the word, that he wasn't uh, actually being godly at home with his own children. So if, uh, we're told that we should be examples. What's the, the highest priority for you and I to be an example? And that is that of love. So Romans 10 says, Owe nothing to anyone except your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbour, you fulfil the requirements of God's law. Then a couple of verses down, it says, Love does no wrong to others. So love fulfils the requirements of God's law. And so there's a sense of things like a love will cover a multitude of sins. And I remember being in a church years ago where they said the minister beforehand was absolutely hopeless preacher. But he had this pastoral heart. He'd visit people all the time. He's an absolutely loving guy. And people said, we didn't mind putting up with really bad sermons because we knew he was such a loving person that uh, his uh, deep, passionate love covered his lack of speaking skills. And said, so uh, we, we, we value his sermons, not because of the quality of his preaching, but the quality of his life. So what's the first steps for you and I to be imitating of God? It's the first to be, is to wear the depth of what it means for our faith. So it's a sense of grasping that we are people of new birth or adoption. It's grasping that we're forgiven, that we're spirit-filled, heaven-bound. Um, we're called not based on how religious we are, but called to have a strong relationship with God. Now it's interesting, if you look up someone like Nicodemus, who was probably one of the nicest guys in Jerusalem, uh, would have been a very devout uh, Bible reader, very knowledgeable of the Scriptures, a man who would have uh, sought to not do anything wrong in his whole life, what does Jesus tell him? See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. And we're told also that we should be born again. So a radical transformation for our life. So when the Spirit of God imparts new life on us, we enter into a relationship with God the Father through faith in Jesus. So in John 1 it says this, But as many as received him, or as many as received God, then he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who are born not of the blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So the first step of uh, our imitation of God is to make sure that we have a right relationship with God. So what does it mean to be a godless example? Then if a godly example is to be like Jesus, what does it mean to be godless? In 1 Corinthians it says, You must be careful so that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble. So the godless witness is where you do things, other people copy you, and it leads them straight away into a life of sin or a life of immorality. And so uh, there's a strong sense we need to look at the, the sins that we think are secret and be aware that they can actually uh, cause harm to other people. It's funny, uh, I uh, have chosen very consciously to not drink alcohol. I actually think there's nothing wrong with drinking alcohol. But I know for years as a youth minister and as a witness, there was a whole lot of young people, if they looked at me and said, oh, he drinks alcohol all the time, 
I know that uh, them seeing me drink one glass of alcohol may be the excuse for them to go and have 10 glasses. So, say, well, Rob drinks, it must be therefore okay for me to drink without realising the limit of what I do. And so uh, I have no trouble with people drinking alcohol, but I knew that if I drank it in a public profile position, others may therefore copy my behaviour, but in a bad way. So what does it mean to imitate Christ? The first is that we should always be seeking to do God's will. So if you look at Jesus, there were times in his life where things were very hard. So Thursday night, he knows the next day he's going to die, Good Friday. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. What does he pray? Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, the cup of wrath. Therefore, not my will, but your will be done. So the first mark of a, a person who's imitating God is you do God's will, no matter what the cost. There's a man who decided that he, he would start loving his wife and said, you know, what really upsets you most? And she says, I hate it when you don't pick up your clothes and put them into the clothes basket. It really upsets me. And he says, right, I will now every morning make sure all the clothes go in the clothes basket because I love you. And one morning, a couple of weeks later, he's driving to work and, he's, and he suddenly realises that he forgot to put the clothes in the clothes basket. And he was already about 10 kilometres from home. He turns the car around, drives all the way home, and his wife says, what are you doing home? So I didn't put my clothes in the clothes basket. But, but what do you mean? He says, well, I, I realised I hadn't done it. Yeah, but where were you? He says, oh, about 10k down the road. He says, you mean you came all the way back? He says, I told you I loved you. You said this upset you. I drove back because I didn't want to leave my clothes there because I knew it would upset you. Now, I think from that moment on, he would never have forgot before he left because it was a long drive, but there was that sense of saying, I've made it a commitment no matter what the cost is. The second thing is that uh, to imitate God is to put God first in our decisions. So in uh, John 17 it says, I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. So uh, we live Christ-like li uh, lives, doing Christ-like behaviour. The third thing that Jesus did uh, in terms of a witness to you and I is his prayer life. So we find in Matthew 14, after sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. And there's numerous references where Jesus was going to pray. He said, well, Jesus was perfect. Jesus is God's son. He's in the most amazing relationship with his father. If he prayed, how much more us as sinners should we pray? Now it's interesting, the fourth key mark of uh, Jesus as a role model for us is his desire to put scripture first so when he gets tempted by satan in the wilderness each of his answers comes from scripture he was a man of god's word and the fifth thing that we find in jesus life is that he would love unconditionally there's a beautiful word a verse in mark 10 where jesus is talking to the rich young ruler and it says that jesus looking at the man Jesus felt genuine love for him. So there's this genuine heart of, the, of that for the lost and, the, and whatever. I know one of the most things I struggle with is every time I hear of someone who needs accommodation, in my, first thing it goes in my head is, oh, they should come stay at our place. We've got a spare bed here. And I consciously got to say, I cannot just bring everyone home that I meet who's in need. But uh, there's need of Christ-likeness. And I can think of a couple where... Um, they would regularly have a dozen people or more sleeping in their house. And there'd be times that they'd say, oh, we had some people sleeping in the house, we didn't have enough beds, so uh, two of the kids jumped in the bed with us and slept in our bed with us because uh, um, they were so cold. You're thinking, you know, you think yeah, it's nice to have people stay in your house, but in your own bed it's, it's nearly too much. But they had such a passionate desire to help those who were struggling. The last thing I want to look at in terms of uh, the, the example of Christ is found in Philippians 2, 5 to 8. That you and I are told that we must have the same attitude as Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not count equality with God as something to be grasped. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. Being born as a human, when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. And so there's a sense that our obedience may be costly. Our obedience may not always make us popular. There's a, a, a 
pastor I read about two or three weeks ago said, if you want everybody to love you, sell ice cream. If you're a pastor, you're called to be faithful to God at all times. <coughs> and there are times that people may or may not love you, but you're to told, told totally to be faithful in all situations. Now, as you go through Ephesians, one of the words that happens uh, with regularity is the word walking. And so there's a sense of obedience to Christ is a daily uh, commitment to every aspect of what we do. So here's some of the walking ones in Ephesians 2.10. For his work in the ship created Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before us, that we may walk in them. So there's a sense that God uh, causes being continuous relationship. Well, Ephesians 4.1. I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling, uh, 4 7. You may no longer walk as the Gentiles do. In Ephesians 4 uh, 5 1, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. In Ephesians 5 8, walk as children of light. Ephesians 5 15, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. So there's a very strong sense that our obedience and our imitation should be a moment-by-moment, moment, day by day event, that every aspect of what we do should be Christ-like. So how are you and I told to live as Christians? What does it mean for us to be holy? Titus 2, 7 says, In all things show yourself to be an example of good deeds, with purity and doctrine, dignified, sound in speech, which is beyond reproach. So the opponents will be put to shame, having nothing bad to say about us. So there's a sense that we should uh, have a godly witness, godly actions, godly words. Jesus puts it very powerfully and says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its taste, how will it be made salty again? You are light for the world. A city cannot be hidden when it's located on a hill. So there's a very strong sense to marks of being a Christian, we're called to be uh, salt in a world that's lost its flavour and light in a world that's living in darkness. So let's just close our uh, closing prayer. Father God, it's struggle to imitate you in all that we do. Help us to see those parts of our life that really do not reflect your behaviour and your words. Father, help us to be Christ-like, to set you uh, always as our light and our example. Amen.